Hello friends, my name is Diane. I'm so happy to see you. Today, we're going to be talking about how to represent things that come in groups. I just got back from one of those big superstores where you can buy everything you need. Groceries, clothes, school supplies, all at the same store. Here's what I bought today. Some juice boxes, snack cakes, cracker packs, packages of nuts, glue sticks, socks, markers, and batteries. What do you notice about the way they are all packaged? What was that? Yeah, that's right. All of these items are packaged in groups. I made a list of some more things that come in groups. Want to take a look? It's pretty cool. We got eyes that come in pairs, so that's two. We've got three angles on a triangle. We've got six legs on an insect. Got seven days in a week, and we've got 10 fingers. This has me thinking about math problems that have equal groups. Want to help me solve some? Great, thank you. Let's start with this pair of socks. One pair has two socks. I can represent it with pictures, words, like one group of two, or with a number sentence to say one times two. What does the one represent? Exactly, the number of groups. And what does the two represent? For sure, the number in each group. And then let's look at that symbol in the middle. What does that represent? You whisper it to me? Yeah, the multiplication equation. We can represent equal group problems with a multiplication symbol. So let's think about it. What if we had two pairs of socks? How would we represent that? We could say two groups of two or two times two. How can I find the total number of socks? Yeah, I can count by twos. We've got two, four. Now what about four pairs of socks? Right? Exactly, we could have four groups of two or four times two. So how many all together? Count with me. Two, four, six, eight. Now, how about six pairs of socks? You got it. Six groups of two or six times two. So how many all together? One more time, count with me. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oh, I said one more time, but we got another one. Here we go. What about 10 pairs of socks? Yup, 10 groups of two or 10 times two. Try this one on your own. What did you get? What was that? Great job, yes. 10 times two does equal 20. Hmm, I wonder what else we could count in groups. Oh, these juice boxes are packaged in groups of 10. How many groups of boxes do we have? Yes, exactly. We have two groups of juice boxes. So how many are in each group? Yes, there are 10 juice boxes in each group. How can we figure out how many total juice boxes we have here? Hmm. We could count by ones but that might take a while. Do you think that there's a better way? Oh, oh, I heard someone saying count by tens. That's a great idea. Let's try that out. So count by tens with me. 10 juice boxes, 20 juice boxes. Excellent, there are 20 juice boxes. Now, let's think about how could we represent our counting. I'll give you a moment to think. Right, we could write two groups of 10 or two times 10. What does the number two represent? 
Say it with me, folks. Write the number of groups. What about the number 10? Exactly, the number of juice boxes in each group. And what about the 20? Yes, we have 20 juice boxes all together. So now what if I had three groups of juice boxes? Three times 10 equals, count with me, 10, 20, 30. What about four groups of 10? 10, 20, 30, 40. What about six groups of 10? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. All right, here we go. 10 groups of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. If we were to count groups of batteries, what would we count by? Yes, fours. What about these box of crackers? Yes, sixes. What about the markers? Exactly, tens. What about the cupcakes? Eights. Awesome job, mathematicians. Let's talk about a word that will show up during our time together. We're going to be talking today about the word factor. What we want to know is that when we're talking about factors, we're talking specifically about multiplication. So with that being said, factors, if we're defining them, are two numbers multiplied together. A lot of times when we're writing a number sentence, when we're talking about multiplication, you'll see blank times blank. That looks more like a plus sign, so we're gonna make sure that we know that it's multiplication. These two blanks would be where we put our factors. So then what do these mean? It's a great question. One of them is going to be talking about the number of groups. That is going to be 10 packs of pencils, or we're going to be talking about three packs of crackers. Whatever the case may be, it's that number of groups that we have. The second factor that we're talking about is going to be the number in each group. When we talk about the number in each group, how many pencils were in those packs? Was it five, was it 10? Whatever the case may be, it's however many are in the group. The biggest thing when we're talking about factors is that we are going to be looking at equal groups. So let's look down at my train cars. You say, oh, I see three train cars, so I've got three groups. Now, what about the number in each group? What do you notice here? Right, they're unequal. That would be an issue if we're trying to figure out a factor because the number in each group is unequal. So now looking at this, how are we going to make this equal? What would you do? I know for me, I would definitely have one of these people where there's three in the train car come over here to hang out with this person. Then I've got two people in this train car, two people in this train car, and two people in this train car. So my two factors for this are going to be three, and two, three train cars and two people. Understanding factors is so important when you're learning about equal groups. Awesome job, mathematicians. Thanks for helping me think about things that come in groups. 
We learned that we can represent equal groups with pictures, numbers, and the multiplication symbol. You also helped me find the total number of items with counting strategies. Great job. I'm going to go put up these groceries, but I wonder what else I'll find that come in groups. Maybe you could look around your house to see what comes in groups. Join me next time to explore more multiplication strategies. Bye, y'all.